This episode of This Agile Life has been brought to you by BrilliantAgile.com, providing agile and scrum training, consultancy, and personnel. BrilliantAgile.com. Done right, it's brilliant. Recorded on Tuesday, March 12th, 2013, in St. Louis, Missouri. This Agile Life, Episode 13, Remote Agile Interrupted. Welcome to This Agile Life, a podcast about what it's like to be agile in the real world. Joining me today is my one and only co-host of the night, Mr. Amos King. Hey, John, how are you doing tonight? Great, Amos. I get to see you two nights in a row this week. That's right, and I have a pocket full of pennies. Thank you for starting the penny throwing hey, at me last night. That was Craig. Oh, uh, it was Buchek. Craig that started that? That punk. Yeah, that was my iPhone. I got to turn that off. Oh. That was Craig Buchek. That was, uh, that's, he started throwing the pennies. I originally wanted to throw rocks at you, <laughs> but we had no rocks, so Craig gave me pennies. And I, I would have taken rocks. I was just really glad to see you last night. That a lot was of fun. Good. Thanks for coming to the Ruby Group. The St. St. Louis Ruby Meetup meeting was last night. It's what is it every month? Uh, it's the second Tuesday of every month. We have a no Monday. Second Monday of every month. Sorry, we have a presentation uh, night, and then the two weeks after that, we have a uh, a hack night. Um, the hack night has a lot less people, but we had a pretty good presentation last night with one of the speakers, uh, Jessica Care from she, who's speaking at Ruby Midwest. She came in and. Gave us a Ruby Midwest talk, and we aired it over Google Hangouts and did some giveaways. It was pretty nice. Yeah, it was really cool. I was glad. I, that was my first St. Louis Ruby meetup that I got to go to. So I We hope, hope to see you back there. Hope it won't be my last. I hope to be back there as well. All right, Amos. So since it's just you and I tonight, we have a special topic for us to talk about, and that topic is remote agile. Basically, now that, Amos, you have a new job, you're working Remotely a lot, right? Yep. Uh, I come to the office a couple days a month, and the rest of the time I work kind of from home, which we can get into a little bit on what I mean kind of from home. Right. So we want to kick around and debate the topic of does does Agile work when you have people that are remote, uh, people that are either working? So I think there's a couple categories of remote. There's people that are in the same or a similar time zone to you, and, and working remote, but then there's people that are time shifted, um, remote working remotely. Obviously, maybe they're in India or Europe, or even like Hawaii, something along those lines, where your your time zones don't line up so well, and it's a little bit harder to communicate. Yeah, I can, I can imagine that, that would be a little tougher. I mean, right now it's kind of nice for me because everybody's working in the same time zone. We have people in St. Louis. We have people in Indianapolis, and then we have me at home. So, The first time I heard about people doing agile development uh, remotely was in the context of offshoring, and it was back in 2003, 2004 time period, and it was around the time that all the big companies were pushing for doing offshore development, and the company I was with was doing agile development, and we were looking at how can we do uh, agile development with an offshore component, which I think is, of course, more difficult than doing it with people that are just remote but in the same time zone as you. And at the time, some folks at ThoughtWorks were doing some uh, papers, white papers on how to make it work. And so we'll maybe get into some of that stuff, but what's your ex experience been like since – You've started. Uh, well, it's kind of funny. It's a it's it's a hot topic right now. Actually, you got uh, Marissa Meyer or Mayer, however you say her name, for uh, the Yahoo CEO, who said everybody needs to to be at work. So you know, you talk about people moving out, which I think ultimately is is good for um, a, a lot of things. Like there's less congestion on the road if people can work from home. There are benefits outside of of work that go there. Um, I understand where she's coming from. I mean, I. Just moving out, um, I, I really found that uh, I'm, I'm very into human interaction. So I, I rented an office. That's what I meant by working kind of from home. 
uh, I, my commute went from 100 miles to three miles, and and the time that I'm sitting in this office that I rented that has no windows uh, at, at first started making me go crazy. And yes, I was interacting with people on chat, uh, sometimes doing some screen sharing or using Tmux for some remote pairing. Um, it 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 got really difficult, and I think that that is something that originally needs to be overcome if you're going to have agile work remotely is is being able if you if you're an extroverted person you you need to be able to contain yourself and the other big topic that i think we should talk about is communication uh because communication and and i even think asynchronous communication becomes very very important far more important than when you're sitting next to people because if you have a communication problem and you're sitting next to them a lot of times it's really easy to reach out and ask for some assistance or some more guidance or clarification on something and it's a little harder to do whenever you're in a completely remote situation. Yeah, and plus you have to like hug at least fifteen people a day to get your hug quota in. If, I know, and if I'm, you haven't at least hugged fifteen, I don't know how you hug fifteen people a day. <laughs> kind of getting hard to, tired of hugging myself. I might have to start sending uh, Aaron Patterson Tinder love some Friday hugs. <laughs> uh, if, if you don't know what Friday hugs are, Aaron Patterson started uh, Twitter. You take a picture of yourself with your arms out like you're giving a hug. And uh, and throw it up on Twitter so you could hug the world <laughs> under the hashtag Friday Hug. Nice. So yeah, uh, I th- I what I found since since I've started working there is that we can do a lot of a lot of the practices that that we do here. We do stand ups uh, originally. Tried doing them over like Google Hangouts where everybody could see each other and had some lag issues and things like that. I think that that works, and I think that we should do that like once a week. But we've also been using a tool called HipChat, um, which shows some history, and that's kind of nice. We do a, a status meeting in there and do our stand-ups that way where everybody says you know what, what they've been working on, what they need help with, the normal status things. But then that stays in that chat room, so even if people come in late, they can see everybody's statuses. And, and I actually like that. A little more than the traditional stand-up because during the middle of the day I'm like what what did he say about this and I just go back and look um, which maybe that limits that communication a little bit of um, me going and maybe talking to him and getting a little clarification but I also don't have to ask him necessarily like if, if it's not a detail thing that I need I just want to know broadly what he was working on it's it's nice to be able to go back to that real quick and see what he was working on and so did you do you do a stand-up phone call and also typing no. in, or you nope. just do it? Just do the typing in thing. So everybody like takes a turn, just like in a normal stand-up, and yep. they type their stuff in. And yep. And then if people show up late too, they can like if somebody has to take care of their kid in the morning and they show up late, they can still read the stand-up and they can still add their status to the stand-up just like they were there. Well, that's interesting because standing up, is, the the reason we stand up is to help limit right the amount of time you spend in the meeting. And I wonder if having to type also keeps people, I, I think limits it does. people. I think it does. Uh, and I do, when I first started doing it, so um, there was a lot of, uh, I'm working on stuff, you know, the, those type of things, maybe a little, little more descriptive than that, but not much. So I kind of pried a little more out of people, but it does keep the stand-ups pretty short. People don't want to be there very long. They want to get to work, and they don't like typing a lot. So it makes it um, concise. Right. And they don't want people to ask a lot of questions, so so they they give you a pretty good inf- amount of information up front, and it allows them to think through what they're going to say a little better because they can type it, read it, and then send it, which is what I do to make sure that I don't mess it up or or if I read it, I'm like, well, that's kind of confusing. It allows me to clarify before I get it out instead of having a lot of a lot of stand up discussion that you get. You know, stand ups are only supposed to be five minutes, but a lot of times. I've been most teams in person stand ups are ten, fifteen minutes, um, just before everybody gets their their clarifications and questions out. It's really interesting. It seems like there are so many benefits possibly to uh, doing the stand up that way that I wonder if folks might have be ex- be willing to experiment with doing their stand ups like that for remote teams or um even doing that if they have a co-located team it just seems like there's some benefit there to having things kind of transcribed right and then 
that's that's the other thing we you know we talk Tice always talks about collecting metrics and things like that is uh or um the uh what is it called the levels CMMI levels they they talk Maturity about documenting levels. all this stuff and if you're doing it in that chat you're already documenting everything you there there is no hey let's write down a couple of the key points all of the key points are there um and everything is documented and we do go back and look at them like the next day and say hey did we how do our statuses compare of what we said we completed yesterday compared to what we said we were going to complete yesterday and we can kind of tell who needs help a lot of times because of that because we see that hey this guy said he was going to complete this but then today he's still working on it and where at a lot of traditional stand-ups that might be happening but people are like oh i've got nothing or they don't say much of anything but because we're doing it um, in chat, we also require that you have to say at least one thing uh, and say actually what you're working on instead of just pass. Um, you can say I'm working with so-and-so, though, if they've already put in their status. So in my situation, we have a blended team of people that are uh, in the room. We have somebody that's in the United States but not in St. Louis. We have somebody, and we have two people that are in Bangalore, India, so when we have our stand-ups in the morning at approximately 9 a.m., you know, there are, there are people that are headed home for the day, and then there's the rest of us that are all on central time zone and uh, have the stand-up. And we do it with a conference call, uh, and we do the, you know, everybody goes around. Sometimes we intermix people from on the phone and in the room so that we don't, like, leave all the people on the phone till the end or um, always starting with the people that are on the phone. And there's definite uh, there's definite challenges to that. You know, you've got some people that are checking out at the end of the day, and are giving you their status, and they might be on a bus or a train or in the car or something, or they're wore out and they just don't want to talk. That's certainly true, also. Uh, or maybe they're already home and they're, you know, the kids are running around or whatever, uh, and they they want would rather be doing family time rather than uh, talking to the guys that are just getting started over in the in the U.S., and we have we have some occasions where they just can't make it because it's their day off at that point, and, you know, they, they've started their weekend already, or, um, you know, they have other obligations. So we've also been recording a lot of these, all, all of our stand-up calls we record. We also record a, a large number of our other meetings. Um, we use, like, WebEx or GoToMeeting to... So do you, do you go back and look at those recordings? Uh, some people do. I, I've done it infrequently, but I've have done it. I mean, I know when when I uh, commuted a lot, sometimes I would voice record some meetings, important meetings with the customer, and when I would jump in the car at the end of the day, I would plug my phone into my um, car and listen to the meeting over again to make sure that I didn't miss any important things that the customer stated. Uh, but I know a lot of people don't don't really do that. Well, the primary reason why we why we were recording or are recording those meetings is because um, the people that weren't there want to be able to attend, kind of uh, virtually attend by by watching what happened after the fact. So, like what we do with our status room, if people are late, they can go ahead and and take in. Uh, this guy's creeping me out, looking over my shoulder here. Yeah, Tice, J- Jason Tice just walked in the room. <laughs> Yeah, we've had some uh, requirements management issues here. Hi. Hey, there's a lot less cussing whenever Jason's not around. Oh, really? Why aren't you on the podcast <laughs> tonight, Jason? Uh, well, I don't know. I thought we. What do you call it when um, you have a scope creep in the podcast? I don't know. That's called host creep. So you're showing up. I'm just showing up. I happen to be around. I thought I'd say hi. Well, hello. Hi. I can. Meet you. Should we? Should we hook him in? Why don't you no, hook up a no, microphone? No, actually, I can't. Speak. But I thought I'd say hi since I just happened to be here. I saw you guys. Well, thanks for coming. Yeah. Nice to see you. And remote agile. Fun. Yeah. So I look forward to hearing what you're talking about. So. Cool. Well, have a good night. Wow. That's called being asked to leave. <laughs> I wasn't trying to ask wow. you to leave. I'm sorry. You're, you're, uh, you're messing up the flow. I forgot I what we were talking about now, this, though. This yeah. is, I'm, like the, I'm like the squeaky wheel that wants the grease. And it says, oh, so how do you now accommodate me? I want something new. <laughs> I want something new in this Agile process that you're talking about. We don't accommodate you on this. You don't accommodate me. We're talking about remote Agile, not squeaky wheels. Well, <laughs> so let me throw in... There's our title, Interruptions. So let me throw in for you. <laughs> remote Agile, that's obviously doing Agile in a distributed fashion with teams, different people on a team working in different locations. 
Right. So whose responsibility is it to facilitate the interaction between the different parties involved? And I think I think we were just kind of brushing along that because that's something that that we've talked about is whose responsibility is it, like you said, Jason, to uh, manage the interactions with the people that are involved? Well, it isn't I would say it's everybody's responsibility on the team. I would too, but and, they're, and they're, that's and what's worked out really well for me on this team is that whenever someone suggested something and everybody says, yeah, let's go for it, other people like on the team are calling people out and saying, hey, you didn't put in your statuses today. Can you can you put in your status? We were talking about doing um, stand-ups over uh, – he, he records his stand-ups and does it over a phone. I do mine over a chat, um, a persistent chat, so people can come in later and read them. If they're late, they can add their own. We can also go back the next day, which I, I mentioned you. I said you probably like because we can the next day we can compare oh, we our an, status we have, we have to history. yesterday's status, and and you have yeah. that whole text recording of everything, so your CMMI is so are you saying collecting you do your data. Stand up by just typing into a journal, or does someone like take copious notes as people are talking? No, no, we just type into chat. So, so it's like type into a Google Doc that we can all share about what's going on, and there's a team rule that Sw- everyone needs. Swivel to- this so that, so that we can hear him a little bit better. Oh. Uh, you can't be heard, huh? I'm, no. well, I'm sure. I'm trying to use the mic that I know picks people up. So. Yeah, we can hear you a little bit, but not well enough. That's okay. Well, I'm, we'll, we'll make we'll make uh, Lee's life fun, right? Since he's going to fix it all. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Good luck. I didn't know you guys were going to be here today. I thought I didn't know there'd be anyone actually up here. So, well, he's he's got his other podcast after. Oh so. yes, I oh yes. So yeah, we we type in um, okay on, into chat, and we were talking about how that can facilitate the hurry up and get it done kind of stand-up feel because people don't want to type a lot, but it also gives people a chance to look at the words that they're typing before they send it instead of, like, you know, when you say something confusing well, at stand-up, that doesn't happen so, as much. So talk me through how that actually works. Is that, like, where the team agrees that by 8.30 in the morning, everyone's going to have logged in and looked at the kind of the flow of messages? 8.30, you can tell this guy works out because he's, he's already at work at 8.30. I, I think it's the same, okay. I think yeah. it's the same <laughs> principle. Yes. By, by noon... Greenwich time, or well, actually, that's <laughs> six a.m. here, so that's a ba- that's even worse. Well, everybody's in the same time zone with me, so we just say nine thirty. Okay. By nine thirty, everybody uh, at nine thirty, people need to start posting. Um, and, some people show up a little bit early, and they'll they'll go ahead and post theirs, and and people come in late, and, and then, then everybody reads everybody's. And stuff. there and there's just there's no face to face or person to person communication other than reading what people type. Right, and we we did uh, do a Google Hangouts version of it first uh we had some latency issues it worked um it actually took a really long time to do the stand-up and i think that we've had more benefit from doing it yeah. on chat and we do once a week um we do our uh, like a weekly status which is really it is the stand-up and then we tack a retro onto it okay and we do that over Google Hangouts, or this week we did it kind of in person because I was up here. I mean, I'll share what I like about that idea a lot right off the back is it, it it captures that if you need it for, say, compliance or maturity model, for a maturity model, it captures that overall audit trail of what's going on. And, and it's easy to look back and, and see if you have a person who's struggling because, hey, yesterday they said they were working on, they were going to work on this. Today they say they're still working on it. So you can say, hey, yeah. do you need any help on that? I'm just, it's funny because it does challenge the overall, where is the boundary of that information? Where, like, where are people allowed to share that? Because it, it could challenge the overall trust that people have in supporting that process on the team because anything I type into the stand-up log in that, the shared file, well, could be used against me. Oh, well, well, luckily I don't work in, in an environment where that's a problem. But in any environment, the stand-ups are, Everyone is welcome to attend, right? I mean, you could have the CIO, the CEO could attend. Yeah. So it it but, should be – you should be saying things that you would say in front of anyone. It should be completely transparent. But put yourself in someone who's new to this whole mysterious thing called Agile. Put, put yourself in their shoes. Okay. And you're asking me to type in information about what I'm doing, what I'm struggling with into an audit trail that who knows where that information will go. I think it's one thing to make a personal statement in a stand-up that, hey, I'm, having, I'm struggling with you know, completing the story. You know, I've had to block this card on, on the Kanban board because I don't understand what's going on, and we need to have a swivel chair to figure it out. 
it's, it takes a certain level of trust amongst your team members to make that statement in an open forum. I, I think you still have that same problem if it's verbal or if it's written. Well, no, I, I was going to say, I think it takes more trust to put, to put it into a written document. I, I would agree with people of a certain age, yes. But the way society has been going, people Facebook and text, and they say all kinds of stupid stuff in public. Well, you know, so I'll, people I'll, don't worry near as credit, much as I will give you credit for that statement because that, that is totally true. That so, so once you put it in that chat room, it's kind of like putting it on the Internet, and a lot of people just – open up even okay, more but, because but, they're used to opening up. But then let me ask you that. Is that Not that that's a good thing. So, so <laughs> then, and you know me, I love to talk about executives and what executives need to do to support Agile. I think there's a need to let your Agile teams operate with some level of trust and, and, and independence that there shouldn't be the back door where we give the, the uh, stand-up audit log to the executives and allow them to manage it as they see fit. So there, I, I would think if you're doing that, and I love the efficiency that you get from that, but I think there's a need for the team to have a, effectively have a relationship with their sponsor where they understand that that's team information, and if there are elements of that information that need to be discussed with the executives, that maybe that's done in a team manner so it doesn't become this and, individual and, interpretation. And, and I will say with some teams you might need that, but not with all. Like everything that we talk about uh, on the podcast with Agile, as we always say, it needs to be personal. And we talked about that last time with the uh, with the 2012 survey yeah. was saying that I I thought that there, everybody should say we're doing a customized agile or, or customized scrum or whatever they want to call it because not everybody's going to do it the same way. So just because this works for my team doesn't mean it will work for someone else's team. Yeah. I agree with that. Well, the biggest thing that I see too is I see I think that if you're starting to say a new project or say hey we're going to do this mysterious new thing called agile it's going to be lots of fun woo. So we go off, we do that. And then you then there's a deviation of trust or there's a violation of trust. So if someone takes the stand-up notes and they share them inappropriately with someone who's outside the defined circle of trust the team has, and there are repercussions. At that juncture, I think you, you find yourself in the, the fun scenario we can throw over to, to John over there. So you've got a – you come in to coach a team. And you find out that okay, there's there's you know Jason and Amos, you know we we're gung ho. We understand that somebody looked at this at this log of information from the stand up, and it was used to kind of maybe reprimand a member of the team for not doing their job. Well, now obviously there are people that don't trust this process anymore, and they may not be as willing and open to contribute to it. And, and at that point, you need to change your process. It's a. Well, I think so. I'm going to ask our coach over here. What what do, what do we do? What what is your strategy to fix that problem? I think it's a breakdown. I think first of all, the problem is that it's a breakdown in the team structure and the trust within the team, because I could say something verbally in a stand up meeting. And you could remember it and go and tell someone, would your credibility maybe be different? Maybe a little bit, but you could still convey that information to this other executive. So it doesn't matter if it's, I mean, we do, we do audio, but we record the audio. So somebody could take our audio recording and, and share that and, and let someone else listen to that. Um, or I th- even if you're doing regular stand-ups and the CTO walks up behind you at the stand-up while you're talking and you say something yeah. out of line, you could... You, it's the same problem. So, first of all, I think that you should only be saying things in stand-up that you would love for others to hear about. And you should assume that anything you're saying in a stand-up, which is often held in a public, relatively public location, people could walk by and hear that, uh, that you'd be okay with whomever hears what you have to say. If we're saying things in a stand-up that are um, that could be used against us or there's or are, is being used against us, we have much larger problems in terms of the health of the organization, the health of the team that can't be sim- solved in a, in a very simple fashion by and, and, and that's yeah, what but, closed door retrospectives are for. you know retrospectives are closed door usually with the team. there's not a not very often you say we're going to have a retrospective and, and oh it's it's open door. anybody can walk in because it's a personal thing. Yeah, that's different. We would is not. Yeah, we would I, never I, I record agree, I'm just, a retrospective. I'm we do not record any retrospectives. If we're talking about having a short, you know, if you have a challenge, one of the key reasons we want to have standards, we want to do agile, we want to have a short feedback cycle saying, hey, I have a problem. I need help. There, there's, there's the need to instill that feeling of trust amongst the team members that they can use however the form is being facilitated for the stand-up, that they can, they can 
they can go ahead and share what but, they need to share. But you mean that I no mean, matter what way you're going to do a stand-up, you have to have a level of trust with, with the team and how that stand-up's going to work. We're... And we're having this happy-go-lucky conversation about what works for us, and he comes in here and starts like, well, well what if somebody yeah. sabotages you? I, I mean, I think because this is I a... Am Tice... the evil enterprise this is, this is why. This is why when Tice comes in, I say stuff like, shit, is because Tice is here. I think this is a, this stuff up. a significant <laughs> exaggeration of a, a problem that already exists today with... E- what if I sent an email to somebody, hey, I need some help? You know, if 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 you have that sort of pro, uh, trust issues on the team where you can't ask somebody for help without them tattletailing to a manager somewhere, I mean, you have deeper problems that don't relate at all to agile or to stand up. It's they relate to your retrospective and how you need to work with your. It's team. that you have poisonous well, personalities it, in your on your team, and it's really again, it's 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 kind of what I, you know what I've looked at and what I see is you know where agile goes, where where agile struggles, especially in an agile transformation environment, where, integrating the wrong people. Well, no, no, no. I, I think you can, you can. There's two separate, there's two separate change management efforts that are needed. One is the people who are actually on the team doing the work, and these are the people that have to, you know, trust each other and trust the standup and know what to do with standup and know what they do in the retro and understand what stays within the team and what doesn't stay within the team, and they can discuss. And that, that actually, I think, is kind of the easier part because that's that's very it's very tactical. It's all you know. You, you can work together, and even if it's working remotely over Skype or whatever. Then there's the people that, if you're doing a transformation, assume that not everyone in the organization even knows what Agile is, and they're on the outside, and they start throwing the big rocks. So he's throwing this into a, an Agile transformation thing, not an already Agile company who's going remote. Okay. Which, which, if no, I'm, I'm okay that. with that. But well, or, if or we want to do that, or that's what, what if, you just or said. what if, what if you have this? What if you have an environment where you have multiple efforts going on, and you're trying to facilitate some level of coordination between them remotely? So, yeah, everyone's working. Everyone's working in a geographically, yeah. geographically different locations. So there, there is very limited face to face collaboration, and instead there is, you know, Amos's group is going to go do some stuff. John's group is going to go do some stuff. Jason's group is going to go do some stuff. And at some miraculous point in the future, we are all going to come together. We are going to, even if we have continuous integration set up to integrate all of our piece parts as we build them in real time, we are still going to have to somehow come to a consensus about we have this integrated set of stuff that represents a release, and it's going to go forward out. So you're going to the next level outside of, we're no longer talking about stand-ups now. Yes, we're talking we, no, about we have, we have integra- the integrating focus. groups or remote singular people into your team, and and I think that you still work the same way that you work when you're when you're in the in the environment. You you pair, you switch pairs. Well, sometimes we don't pair as often um, at the Able Few as as we did uh, when I was epic in fail. Group. What what does your pyramid look like? Uh, I paired with everybody, but we don't pair. <laughs> all the time um, because of having remote work but we we're not integrating we don't build one piece in a closet and another piece in a closet and wait for the CI server to integrate them we are talking we are communicating communication is the key and that's another reason why I think that with remote um, either recording like John does or putting it in a chat like I do is a, a great tool for a remote agile team is because that allows them to go back and look at that and and come up with questions, uh, clarifications. Sometimes I don't need to go go talk to somebody for a small clarification because they've already told me twice. I just want to go back and look at it. Um, and it can eliminate a lot of that frustration that people end up with sometimes whenever they've explained the same so, thing to so you twice. So you're saying that if you're sitting and you're saying, I think that I need to adopt a, I'll use the term, a divide and conquer strategy. And I have, say I have 15 different developers at my disposal and i think that it is as me as the misinformed executive i believe that it is most efficient to say amos here are you and your four colleagues go work on this stuff and john here are you and your four colleagues go work on this stuff and jason here's you and your four friends go work on this stuff but all three of those groups need to continue to communicate throughout the entire process and being remote, asynchronous communication is a really good way to do that. And an asynchronous communication in a public forum so that if John has a question for you and I have that same question comes up 20 minutes from now, 
if we oh, have yeah. this if we have this yeah. log yeah. of everything, then then I can just wow. oh yeah, I'm gonna have that question. I jump in, yeah, and group. we all talk. We are continuously on. We never shut chat off. A group chat like that it could be incredibly helpful for keeping a dialogue going so throughout right. the course so of a project, and, and that's what we do. So, and well, we wait, never ever I wanted, shut it off. I wanted to say something too. One of the th- one of my goals when we have people working remotely is. I want to get to a place where I never hear somebody say, I don't know anything about that because he did it or she did it. And that person that they're talking about is somebody that's uh, outside of the confines of, of the immediate room that everybody else is in. And, and that shouldn't matter. I, right? I think typically on an agile team, uh, if you bring somebody in, we have a bug here. Here's the bug. Who can work on it? Well, only Joe can work on it because he, he wrote it. On a typical Agile team, I think you hear people say, well, I'll work on it, and but they know something about it, either because they've been pairing with someone who's been working on that or they've had that, I'm in the same room, we've been having conversations about this, Joe's asked me about this before, and Sally's asked me about this before as well, and so I feel like I know what's going on there and can pick up the code and make the change. I mean, yeah, I think, and, I, I, and, and I think you can still do that remote. Okay, so I want to hear how you do that because today I, I'm, I, I hear a lot of people saying, I can't do that. Well, I, it was I, somebody over here I developed have another it. another one, so I'm going to line up here. Wait, wait, you we can't answer have questions? another one. we got to answer his question You answer first. his question. I'm, quit, I'm, ready. I'm bringing quit it. Quit derailing I the am, podcast. I am bringing it. Shit, Tice. See, you made me say it. You cursed. <laughs> you cursed again. <laughs> um, so, like, the, the only thing that I think becomes more difficult whenever you're, you're doing remote agile is that communication. So... Um, there there are all kinds of tools out there for communication. If you need some face to face communication, there's Google Hangouts, there's Skype, there's uh, a phone. There, well, phone's not face to face, but there's voice communication. There, you you have all these tools at your disposal, um, and and then you have the asynchronous communication that allows everybody to get a hold of it. Um, and, and that that's the way we work it. And we still have a lot of the same rules that we had on Teams. Whenever I was working in an environment where I was always there, um, like if you want to Google something, you don't Google it. First, you go to the chat and you ask the team. That way, the whole team can say, hey, I've heard this and I've heard that. You can still Google it afterwards if you, if you don't like their answers or whatever. How does and that then, scale, and then, Amos? And then your response, whenever you, if nobody says anything or even if people do, if you do go out and Google it afterwards, you bring you that bring knowledge okay, back like that. to okay. the team. That's how it scales. Okay. And that makes us all better. So that's so interesting because um, I like the idea of having to ask the chat room first. Now, have you guys established like a set of team norms that says this is how you operate, or is it just what everybody understands and knows about the team? Uh, we, we've actually set a few things, and, and we're working slowly. You know, we do a retrospective at the end of the week, and we pick one change, and we implement that change for the next week. One and only one change, unless there's something like hugely dramatic that we have to do so we only do okay, one so, all right let's let jason get so his thing I, in because we only go got is, we only I got want, five minutes I left jason you, how is this sustainable because what i'm what i and again i uh, truth be told i have not tried this um i have in the past we've tried various things where we used to do once upon a time we used to do like stand-up notes in a wiki and that failed everyone said it was too cumbersome so i like and the tooling has advanced that if i mean you can even just use a google doc and have six people type into it in real time and everyone can see their stuff yeah totally so is there is there a does someone take a task to over time go through and really execute some some knowledge management on all of this valuable information? Whereby, I've only been there three weeks. Okay, because <laughs> what I'm what and, I'm seeing, and I'm the one that instituted stand ups. Okay, but what I'm seeing, and I, again, I think it's a great idea. But my question, and I guess we can do an experiment, is over time, is the information can you maintain it in a way that are, it, it's it's relevant? And you can use it to facilitate decision making. I will say that um, some people on the team have already talked about creating a stand up app that is like a chat room where I could say, I did this, I did that, and then I can go back the next day and stand, instead of saying what I did yesterday, I can say, here's my task that I said I was going to complete yesterday. And I can say, completed, still working, and here's my next future move. And so that they could track that over time. See what, see, for- wouldn't it be great if your Kanban board could? 
could help populate those things. You could wire your app into your Kanban board. See, Link, it could, Link it could do that. That's a fun story. But, but it's, it's the number two next to version one. I know. Link it's awesome. In the, in the version one survey. <laughs> but the, where I was going that is, Jason I mean, you guys, so tell me a few things about Bible. So, okay, you guys as a development team are putting all this effort into maintaining this, this nice audit of everything that was done, all the decisions that were made, and the logic and data that supports those decisions. I think but they don't call it that. I think that that's valuable right. information, but I am questioning if you simply just keep doing that over time, if there's an overall structure I, to I that th- information. I think it doesn't, it, I, it doesn't matter. The information's there. It doesn't matter because right now what you're doing on a person-to-person stand-up and by not recording is that information goes into the ether. Yeah, no, I agree. That's trial and error. That, that's horrible. So, so this is an improvement. Where so I, I think go, it scales better than that. But where I want to go is say that is there a, would you believe that there would be a value if somebody from, again, from the evil place where people do enterprise architecture to say that, ooh, now we need to do enterprise knowledge management. And so at some period of time, somebody goes through this log or the, this trail of the stand-up activities and records the key decisions and things. And, and, the, and, the, and yes, I think you and, can absolutely do that. And I think that's now, why some that, of the people on my team have been talking about making a stand-up tool that allows you to yeah. mark things as important. Because the only reason I'm talking or, that out is, or, I, in some ways, I think that sounds like busy work. Like, we did all this logging, which is good, but then someone at the end of, say, a two-week or a one-week period has to go back through the log and extract out the most relevant strategic well, things. And, and that's what I'm saying. That's why people on my team want to create an sure. app for this. Is because they want to be able to mark things as this is a team decision. This should go automatically onto a page that says here's wow. team decisions over time. This is a task, and here it was stated that they were going to work on it on this date, and it was stated that they were still working on it and completed on this date. So you can track all those tasks. You can track uh, you can track team decisions because sure. you can tag things. So basically, you could take status messages and tag them. Well. And don't forget, and, and we, there's your metrics, well, and that's and, better and, metrics and, than what we're and, collecting. And now. to get the closure, I mean, I'll share. I'm, I'm I'm thankful for stopping by and crashing the discussion. Since I mean, just this past week alone, I've been in some meetings. We've been doing some efforts with remote collaboration amongst different groups, and we've suffered from the key element that people were a, a decision was made, and not everyone who needed to be in the room was involved in the decision. And then there's all these questions about well, what was the merit upon which the decision was based, and within a very short cycle time effectively a decision that there was an investment made to make that decision has now been reversed or is now up for consideration again simply because the appropriate collaboration was not facilitated to make that decision. And now the great thing is if you have it in chat, you no, hit I, I, Control I, F or Apple F and you and search you for those find. key terms and then you can read it. Yeah. And it, well, you're talking about the key term, You're talking about knowledge management because that's where someone's going to go over time and maintain a taxonomy. I know we love you to don't talk have about to. taxonomy. You don't have to. You know, if we're sitting around and you say – why did they decide to to why why was it decided that we're going to use technology A? You go search for technology A in there because it's going to come up. That is your keyword. You don't have to like track some taxonomy and and keep this big list of all these words that okay. you've always said. So go run that on a project for four years and do that search and tell me how well it works. That's where I think there four, needs to be some I don't, information I don't think, or some knowledge management applied. I don't to think that. that four years worth of stand up data, your stand up data shouldn't be so long. That you can that it's going to bog down your computer. I, I don't need a so, supercomputer to search through. So we need text. to go. We need to go right. on the record to say that Amos no. is now being an advocate it. for enterprise knowledge management of stand up of data that is generated in a stand up meeting. Amos, you are an enterprise architect, and you don't <laughs> even know it. You're just cruising for a punch from Amos. He, he is. I'm. I'm angry. The world. All right, well, I guys, extra, I, I, I was going to say one thing. Sure, um, but we're just we were, about out of time. You were talking about the people being uh, heading home and stuff like that. Yeah. You might want to try out um, doing doing a chat room and then maybe only once a week doing a, a live one. Yeah, I think I'm going to bring it up in our retrospective. Cool. Let it's me good know how information. It goes. I think that we should do Remote Agile Part 2 uh, n- next month so we can talk about more than just stand-up. Oh, I, I think so as well. I mean, absolutely. We, re- we ran we out of... one of any drive-bys that introduce host creep to our podcast. We're going to kick Tice off. <laughs> guys rock man keep living this agile life I love you Tice take it easy alright guys uh, so we're, we've wrapped up our discussion we've committed that we'll come back and talk about that uh, next time and we'll, we'll continue the, the discussion of remote agile because I think there's a ton more stuff that we need 
need to talk about. I mean, we really only started to scratch the surface on remote agile tonight. So maybe we, we'll, we'll maybe pick we this. need to do another two person one. Yeah, since you're doing remote and I'm doing remote, we can just and do we'll it. talk about that, and then we can bring other people back on the on a third podcast, and then they can push against it. Hey, we can do a remote podcast. Yeah, just the two of us. <laughs> yeah. All right, Amos, special edition. Let's do our picks real quick and then wrap it up. All right, why don't you go? Um, <clears throat> okay, so I've got I've got three picks today. Um, two of them uh, relate to my new work. Uh, ClickWithMeNow.com. Um, Click with me now is the project that I'm currently working on, and it's pretty cool that uh, you can go to a site and then have a button on that site, and you can click on it and share that that view of the site with a friend. And like, let's say you're doing some trip planning uh, for like you you want to go to uh, American Airlines and find tickets. You can find tickets with your your friend or your family for vacation. And just purchase them right then instead of finding the tickets, then talking to them later, and then come, and then when you go back, the tickets are gone. Um, and then the other thing, it, my second pick is the Able Few. That's the company that I went to work for, theablefew.com. Uh, and I just wanted to pick them for helping me. I've been driving for six and a half years, 100 miles each way, and now my commute is three miles. So I really appreciate what, what those guys have uh, have offered me, and they've been a whole lot of fun to work with. Pretty good group of guys. There's only eight people in that company, so it was a big change for me. Uh, and then Ruby Midwest uh, is at rubymidwest.com. It's a conference coming up on April 5th and 6th, I want to say, maybe 4th and 5th. I just blanked out. Um, it's a Friday and Saturday, and it uh, was really good last time I went, and I'll be there. So if any listeners are there, look for Amos. Um, bright orange hair, smirky grin, probably... Telling people to screw off or something, or hu- or hugging someone, or hugging people, <clears throat> rub- rubbing their backs. <laughs> Either way, very easy to spot. <laughs> Good picks. Click with me now. Dot com looks really cool, Amos. That's yeah, awesome. I'm gonna have to check that out and maybe use it with my family. All right, I'll have to. I'll I'll show you a rundown. Cool. So I've got a couple of picks. Uh, my first pick is in St. Louis. We've been lacking a an agile user community for some time since uh, the old XP STL group kind of wrapped up. Uh, so a new, a new agile forum is starting. It's starting on April 11th. It's going to happen from 6 to 8 PM at Savas uh, at 1:41 and 40. Uh, if you're in St. Louis, you'll, you'll know about where that is. I'll put a link in the show notes so that if you're interested in attending the Agile User Forum, you can find the link and RSVP and attend. And uh, and then one last pick. This is kind of self-pimping for myself. I have a small consulting firm, uh, NinePrinciples.net, uh, Nine Principles.net, and we're hiring uh, we're hiring Scrum Masters and Agile Developers. We have immediate openings in the St. Louis area, and if you're interested in one of those positions, please send me an email at john.sextro at gmail.com. Those are the picks. So that's all we have time for today, Amos. Thanks for a great night, my, uh, Mike. I just called you Mike. That's all right. Mike just sent me a message. <laughs> <laughs> I'm behind a mic. So how's that? There you go. Uh, well, thanks, John. It was uh, pretty nice, just the two of us there at the beginning until Tice came in and sabotaged the whole thing. Yeah, he, um, he took us off the rails. Uh, I had a good time tonight. And, thanks. Uh, it's nice to see you in person again. So people can find out more about you over at dirtyinformation.com. And at, That's right. Horrible blog. <laughs> at, at ADKron on yep. Twitter. ADKRON and on GitHub at ADKRON. Great. And I'm or John. you can go look at a really stupid picture of me at theablefew.com with a Ruby shirt on, and then you'll know what I look like at Ruby Midwest. Well, we, we, I'll have to check that out. So I'm John Sextro. You guys can find out more about me at johnsextro.com, and you can follow me on Twitter at JC Sextro. Thanks for listening. Be sure to check out our website at thisagilelife.com to find the show notes for this podcast. And as always, like Jason said, keep living this agile life. <laughs>